Hi, thanks for watching. Okay, lately, I think everybody's noticed there's been a lot of uh, noise on the internet, a lot of uh, videos on YouTube, and just a lot of attention being paid to what's happening with Danny Masterson in prison right now. And so that everybody knows, um, professionally, I work as a legal consultant in the area of a criminal defense. I do legal research and, and strategy consulting in criminal defense. And so I do have an interest in this case, um, not, just, not just curiosity about how Danny Masterson is going to do in, in prison, but also the broader political and sociological question of what it's like to actually be in prisons in the United States and whether there are some issues uh, around the administration of prisons in the United States that, that put people in unnecessary danger, okay? Um, this is obviously an important political question and an important legal question and even sociological question because obviously, you know, um, being the United States, I mean, we're not, we're not that oppressive of a country. And so we're not going to want to oppress like the, the kind of natural cultures that arise in prisons. So, you know, prisons do have their own cultures on the inside. And you could even say that, you know, the, the outlaw culture where they have their own codes and customs. OK, and so there are, you know, kind of codes and customs that are sort of particular to, let's say, the outlaw culture in the United States. But on the other hand, I think we're all well aware that, you know, part of the code and culture of, uh, let's say, you know, the outlaw people or whatever people in prison um, involves sometimes uh, really hurting people or even killing them. So because Danny Masterson is serving a prison sentence uh, on convictions for, let's say, a certain type of crime, let's say a crime that starts with the letter R, okay, that maybe is not like, say, the most respected in the outlaw community or the, the criminal community or whatever, the convict community. Um, basically, you know, there is a lot of talk about, and, and I'm not sure if it's just talk about, I think people are even maybe sort of out loud sort of hoping you know, that maybe something bad would happen to Danny. So coming from uh, some Scientology YouTube channels and also from some like uh, ex-con, like ex-prison, prisoner uh, YouTube channels, there has been a lot of voice given, a lot of voices out there given uh, to the possibility of something happening to Danny right now. I said, you know, the next time we talk about this, it's probably going to be because the guy's been injured. And, uh, you know, there's been a lot of rumors about um, you know, hits that are supposed to be, uh, you know, taking place. The rumor has been that when they come off lockdown, that there's somebody ready to hit uh, old uh, old DM, that there is somebody ready to, uh, to take him out. So I am interested in this case, uh, number one, because I am concerned about prison safety. I mean, I work as a, I work in criminal defense. And so obviously we are concerned about the safety of, of our clients that go that go to prison. And also I'm just concerned as a citizen about, you know, what, what kind of country are we if our prisons are, are places where you don't just serve your punishment on paper, you know, you, you're supposed to do like say 30 years of, of imprisonment, but on top of that, you have to be living under like say torture conditions of not knowing when somebody's going to shank you to death or whatever, you know? So, so that's, that's on the one hand. But our prison system is um, in a state where prisoners when they're sentenced to sentences, their sentence ends up being a lot more than their sentence because they're, they're sentenced to an environment where they can be subjected to harm. I can agree and acknowledge that that is a, uh, a failure of our system. But on the other hand, I'm also a big believer in free speech. OK, I think people if we're going to have really the ideal democracy that I think the United States pretends to be. OK, we need to be a place where people can say really provocative and unpleasant and even disturbing things, even in public. OK, I just think that uh, that R is wrong in every single uh, um, in every single one of its uh, its forms. I don't much care what happens to this cat. I really don't. I mean, no matter what they do to this dude, it's not going to uh, it's not going to hurt um, how I enjoy my dinner. I promise you. And that's just part of the freedom that we have in this country. And then it's up to us as the public to sort of sort of be good enough to deserve our country so that we don't, as a consequence of our free speech, uh, descend into something that looks more like uh, like Brazil or Mexico, you know, in terms of our prisons. So here I'm reminded that, you know, a true uh, liberal democracy is really a risk. It's a risk, you know, just like Ben Franklin said, Benjamin Franklin said, you know, what you have here is a democracy if you can keep it. You know what I mean? Or I think he said a republic. You know, you, what you have here is a republic if you can keep it. And that's the thing. You know, we have all these freedoms and it's up to us to either deserve it or to just uh, or to just fall and turn into a failed nation. OK, and so that's that's the dilemma that we have. And then on top of that, the other issue that I have that I think is very interesting here 
is how when you have somebody who on the one hand has committed a very serious and provocative crime, the kind of crime that would invite the outlaw community to take action. Okay. And let's not forget about the, the Josh Duggar, you know, the, the, the child P and he has kind of a background where he could also be in danger in prison. And I haven't heard, you know, the same clamor on the internet, you know, for Josh, Josh Duggar to be like, uh, you know, um, taken out or whatever, or, you know, waiting for him to be hurt in prison. So I guess less attention is paid to him. But, you know, when you have higher profile people that, that are either a little bit famous or they have money, okay, then the question becomes whether they get special protections. They don't break procedure like this for anybody. They put him in a 65 and over unit that's like 65 and over, it's senior citizens to hospice. So why is he getting this special treatment, y'all? Why do you think that Danny Masterson is getting this special treatment? Because they don't care if you're famous in there. That's not something that they're worried about. Okay, so there's all kinds of layers here. Okay, you have, first of all, you know, should we be free to talk openly and even say kind of nasty things that, that we think about prisoners, you know, knowing that that could pr produce even pr could provoke uh, some kind of action on the inside where they could actually get hurt. A lot of people feel a lot of people have said in my comment section that they think I am glorifying or advocating or cheerleading for something happening to Danny in prison. I guess I can understand why people would feel that way. I guess when something is kind of personal, I mean, personal, like I personally know uh, the, uh, many of the women that Danny attacked. I personally know how Scientology, how far Scientology went to threaten and silence the victims. It's hard not to sort of reflexively cheerlead for some bad things to happen to Danny. And then secondly, when somebody is so wealthy and so famous that they may appear to get, I would even say special treatment from the very top. So obviously this is a very interesting case, okay? It's a very disturbing case. And I think some of us are right to be disturbed, okay? I think people are right to, to question whether all the voicing and all the talking uh, on the internet may indirectly be putting people in more danger than they would be otherwise. Okay. So that's on the one hand. Okay. On the other hand, free speech. Okay. We are a free country. Okay. It's up to us to deserve our country in spite of the free speech. Okay. So we should, we should be, you know, it's such a, I guess we should be such a good quality of people in, in this, in this uh, free democracy. So that even if we hear things that are provocative, people speaking freely, we don't necessarily have to go down to that level and we can sort of hopefully as a nation, we could take the high road and not, let's say, be victims of the free speech. Uh, so the free speech doesn't have to bring us down. You know what I mean? And that's just kind of the risk of a democracy. You know, that in the end, the, the quality of our nation is the quality of us as people. OK, so that if we're really, really good people, we can be exposed to really toxic and provocative things. And we're good enough that we're not going to you know, uh, descend down to that level and actually have anything bad happen. So it's kind of a kind of a balance. You know, hopefully I would hope that we can be a country where people can speak freely and we can say very even disturbing things because we're being honest about how we feel, but that we're also such a high quality people that we're not just like like lab rats where as, where as soon as we're stimulated by some really provocative uh, comments or, or statements that we just respond reflexively, you know, like, of, oh, yeah, you know, let's get him. You know, I, I you know, like being infected by people talking about, like, say, almost wishing harm on somebody that we're we're not so primitive that we're just infected by that. And we just we just, you know, we just all create like a like a mob, like a like a mob reaction where, where something actually happens, you know. So that's that's the, the risk in this country. You know, we have to be better than just a mob, basically, because otherwise, you know, if we if we just let ourselves descend down to the, our basic mob uh, common denominator or whatever, uh, then we'll we'll lose our democracy. You know, I mean, it, we ought to have the freedom and have the risk, but we have to bear the on our shoulders the responsibility of not just being a mob, you know. And that way, people can actually speak freely, and it can be a place where where there's no like suppression on what people feel and how they can express themselves. With that said, I'd like to respond um, and react. This is like a reaction video to uh, Aaron Smith Levin and to the Lifeboat, and then to a uh, JD Delay. I, and by the way, I think these are actually pretty cool channels, and I. I I have to I, I, shamefully, I have to admit there is some entertainment value, and I do enjoy watching these these channels. But I also want to react and you know try to at least try to uh, respond with some kind of hopefully, you know, positive, uh, I think positive perspective that, that is not anti-free speech. Okay, let's never go, hopefully, uh, we, we should almost rather lose our country than to lose our free speech, you know, better for us to take the risk 
of having a country that, that falls into a failed state to take that risk than to never have the chance to be better people. You know what I mean? So it's almost better if we face the danger of free speech and maybe we should be, you know, we should admit that free speech is a danger, but the question is whether we can rise to that level of the danger of free speech. So here's my, here's my reaction. Um, basically I disagree. Now here's the thing. Okay. I respect, I respect, uh, the lifeboat. Okay. And I really like his channel. Okay. But I'm just going to say in free speech, I kind of, don't share his perspective. Okay. In other words, I don't, I don't personally know Danny Masterson. And by the way, I probably wouldn't even like Danny Masterson. Okay. Even if he had never committed his crimes. All right. All right. I would probably not like him anyway, just because the vibe I get from him is he's probably not somebody that I would ever like anyway. However. Okay. Um, and so I could almost say like on a personal level, you know, would I really care if anything happened to him? I mean, things happen in prison to thousands of people all the time and I'll never even know about it. So why would I have such a special concern for Danny? So in that sense, I could say that I kind of don't disagree really with, with, uh, the lifeboat. Okay. However, I do disagree in a way that, um, if something were to happen to Danny, okay, the lifeboat says he wouldn't, he wouldn't lose any sleep. It wouldn't affect him. He would be able to eat his meals comfortably. Okay. Well, see, I would be affected. Okay. And it wouldn't be because I care so much about Danny. It's not because I care so much about Danny. It's because of what I think it represents about us as a country. Okay. I would be disappointed in this country. Okay. If on the one hand we have our free speech where people can talk openly, but then to see us be so primitive and to be such a mob that we can't even handle listening to people speak freely about what they wish for people in prison. And then we just have to just reflexively just react and just end up doing something that would end up harming uh, Danny. So I guess I, I would be disappointed. Okay. I would rather see a country where people can speak openly. Okay. But that we don't necessarily have to react to it like, like primitive laboratory animals. You know what I mean? So that's, that's my response to the lifeboat. And so in that sense, it's not because I have personal feelings towards Danny. It's not that it's that I I'm concerned about what it would reflect about us as a people. Now, as far as Aaron Smith Levin, okay, again, free speech. Okay. He's entitled to his opinion. He's entitled to his way of expressing his opinion. Okay. That's his way, but I do have a response and I do have, I guess, a reaction to Aaron Smith Levin. And I guess I just would wish, okay, for people that are very popular, okay, and he's very popular and he's very influential. When you are an influencer or even a semi-celebrity, okay, the power of your opinions is going to be a little more, um, a little more intense than if it's just a random opinion. So his opinions carry more weight, and I think his opinions have more influence. So now he's welcome to just do whatever he wants. I mean, he could be just like Alex Jones, or he could just find any place in the middle. You know, he can say what he wants, however he wants to. But I would just say that, you know, if I had that kind of influence or anybody who has that kind of influence, okay, just to be hopefully mindful that the way they say things and what they say and the way they get people excited and the way they, they sort of infect people with enthusiasm, you know, that can create a risk, okay? And so I think there is a stochastic risk that a lot of talk and talk and talk and talk about, you know, kind of talking about maybe Danny, maybe being in danger, or maybe there being a hit that can become sort of a self-fulfilling that can gather self-fulfilling momentum, you know, in, I guess, in the mob consciousness, you know, now I'd like to think we're not a mob, but just being realistic, you know, there's a little bit of mob in all of us. I think, you know, even in me, you know, I'm, I'm not above being infected. And so I would think that even though we have the freedom, okay, one of the, one of the wonderful things about being a citizen is that you have all this freedom, but we also have, you know, the free will to regulate how much we use that freedom. You know, we don't have to take all that freedom and but that's for us to decide, you know. So I would I would hope that, um, you know, people could express, you know, maybe even say, hey, personally, I wish he'd be hurt. Right. But then they could add something very quickly and just say, but, you know, that's what I wish. But I also don't want that to happen. OK, even though I wish it because I don't want to be in that kind of country where we're just we're just like it's like Mexico or Brazil. We're like a third world country where, you know, um, basically the law is not even the law. You know, you get you get a sentence that says 35 years of prison. But in reality, what you get is torture and, and basically living under conditions of torture, essentially. OK, so, you know, that's that's on the one hand. And by the way, I realize that Aaron Smith Levin did admit he did admit exactly what I'm saying that, you know, there is on the one hand, the question of whether um, by promoting, you know, that his ideas and, and his wishes, I, I guess, or his, his 
his feelings about, you know, what he wishes for, for Danny, that he could be maybe indirectly inciting or, you know, sort of motivating a spirit, you know, of wanting things to happen that could actually cause, cause Danny to have, you know, something really bad happen. Okay. And so he does recognize that, but I just wish he would underline it a little more when he actually admits what he wishes, because, you know, just, just being aware of his influence and, uh, you know, again, he's free to say it how he wants to, you know, that's, that's on us as people, we don't have to be infected by that. But I guess I wish I would, I wish, I, I wish he could take more responsibility, you know, in the way he says things and maybe just not necessarily just be so openly, um, kind of fanning the flames. You know what I mean? You know, again, he's free to do it and it's up to us, but you know, you don't, you don't have to take advantage of every freedom. And, and I think it, it is helpful. I think sometimes for people to, to restrain themselves, not, not because they have to, but because they, they just want to be, maybe take the higher road. You know what I mean? And so, you know, he, he can still express what he wants, but I think he could put more of an asterisk and a footnote on it. Just, just so we all understand that that's not what he actually wants. That may be what he wishes, but it's not what he wants, you know? So it's just my, just my response. And by the way, he can say things however he wants to. And I guess I'm just giving feedback to myself if I were ever in Aaron's position, you know, how I would handle it, you know, because I guess I, I want the country, I, I want the country to be better than, than just a country where, you know, um, where people don't actually serve the sentences that they're given, that they actually, you know, it says on paper, you're going to do 20 years, but in reality, you're going to get, you're going to get stabbed in a corner, you know, and, and bleed out, you know, and, uh, you know, dying like, like even, even executions are more humane than that. You know what I mean? So it's just something to think about. And then finally, as far as JD delay, um, I really enjoy his channel. He's so entertaining and I think so talented, you know, and, and I, and I really respect what he's saying because here we are talking about, you know, an ideal democracy and that, you know, what kind of country are we, you know, if, if we, if we don't, you know, if we don't, let's say live up to the ideals of our democracy, but then in reality, uh, you know, some people get treated like dogs or, or, or tortured in prison. And then other people are treated like, like royalty where some people get like extra protections and here we have you know we're talking about danny masterson and wondering whether he's going to be like in danger in prison and then it turns out he's given such special protection he's sent to basically this elderly unit you know in the california men's colony in san luis obispo where he's basically essentially like in an elderly hospice unit you know so i mean people are are people are right and, and people are uh you know I sympathize with people who find that to be problematic because then what's the, is it just because he's famous, you know? And I guess my response to that would be, I think it's because of the level of famous that he is. Okay. It's not just that he's famous, but he, he's basically, it would be so embarrassing. I think to the Gavin Newsom, uh, you know, governor it's, it's, it's his cabinet, you know, one of his cabinet members, it's, it's a, I think it's, I don't know if it's a cabinet member, but he's directly appointed by Gavin Newsom, whoever is the head of the, the California Department of Corrections. OK, and so this is somebody who's up at the cabinet level of, of you know, the governor's uh, administration in California. And these people rub shoulders with all the elites from uh, Los Angeles. And these are people that are on like a first name basis with like Kamala Harris and, you know, all these really high up people. And it would just be super embarrassing if a well-known Hollywood star who was a star in a, in a super successful, uh, you know, uh, a TV series, like a comedy series, it would be like, it's, it's kind of hard to think of the, the equivalent. It would be like, like an actor from friends, you know, um, or something, you know, such a, such a high profile actor who's, who's in like, you know, uh, a really, um, uh, you know, a real famous TV series would end up being like shanked in, in a California prison. That would be so embarrassing to the, to the, to the governor's, uh, administration. And I think, uh, a lot of those people who are in the governor's administration rub shoulders with people that probably rub shoulders with people who are very close to the Mastersons and people who are in sort of the Hollywood world. So it's, it's not just the fact that he's famous, but it's just that he probably has, I would say Danny Masterson probably comes from a, a world where the people that he's close to actually rub shoulders with people that are not too far away from uh, Gavin Newsom. So I think it's kind of that, that thing where it would be just so embarrassing, you know, something like that. And yes, it is unfair. And I think we're, we're right to question that, you know, and if, and if, uh, if California can provide such a Royal treatment to Danny Masterson, then should it not provide the same treatment to every single person who's been convicted of a sex crime, who's potentially exposed to the kind of uh, harms and, and tortures that actually go on in, in the United States. So, you know, I personally think we should be concerned. Um, 
you can hate the crime. You know, I hate I hate sexual crimes. You know, I hate a lot of I hate I hate non-sexual crimes. I hate I hate carjacking. To me, carjacking is one of the worst crimes you could ever commit. I think it's it just you you ins, you you know carjacking really really terrorizes people. It's almost some it's almost close to terrorism. You know the the kind of fear you inspire and the kind of danger you put people in when you carjack. And I I really sometimes I wish that you know, harm would come, let's say, to somebody who, com- who is uh, convicted of carjacking. But, you know, that may be my wish, but that's not really what I want. And I don't think that's what any of us want. I think, you know, either we like the law on the books or if we really think that certain people should be tortured, well, then go ahead and get the 75 percent of the population to amend the Constitution. OK, to take out that part of the Constitution to say that we won't have cruel and unusual punishments, you know, do the hard work, you know, get a constitutional amendment if you really want it so bad. Get your 75 percent of the population to take take the whatever it is, I think the Eighth Amendment or whatever, and make it legal to do torture and cruel and unusual punishment. OK, and then reserve cruel and unusual punishment on the books for certain crimes. But go ahead and do the do the hard work. You know, as, as long as the Constitution says what it says, even though we may wish for things, I don't think that's what we really want. You know, and I, that's what I would hope for us as people, you know, that we, we may have our feelings that we can express our feelings. But that doesn't mean that we really want to live in a failed state, you know, so that that's kind of my position on all this. And, um, you know, it's not like I wish the best for Danny Masterson. I just wish that we as a people could have a country that's worthy of the ideals, you know, that that I think we hold for for this country, you know, that the law says what the law says and that if somebody is sentenced to 30 years, they'll do 30 years and they'll have, you know, sort of decent, a decent existence in prison. And it's not going to be like like living in hell or living in living with a bunch of demons and being tortured for 30 years, you know? So if that's, if that's the kind of country we want, we can have our wishes. We can openly talk about our wishes, but that's not really what we want, you know? So I hope, I hope that's well said. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just my opinion, but, you know, um, there's been a lot of talk about Danny Masterson and, and frankly, I think it's been a little bit alarming to me, you know, because we, we're almost seeing in real time how somebody could be put in real danger just by, the way we talk about about these things. And, and I, I think of that as a danger of free speech. You know, free speech should be allowed. Uh, but but then the question is, how how do we handle that danger of the free speech? And I just hope that we as a people can rise to a higher level and not and not um, not show signs of, of, of uh, living in a failed state. And that that's on us to sort of handle the danger of free speech, you know, so. Basically, okay, that's my that's my summary and uh, really appreciate your patience and thanks for watching.